like that. Look, look at that. Cheers. 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 people of the internet. So that footage that you just saw was right before the Pat Metheny concert that I was lucky enough to attend last week. So I was able to go through Butler University and they could send some of the faculty and students um, in and we were also able to go to the sound check and a short Q&A session with Pat Metheny before the concert, um, which was really great. Unfortunately, they were very strict about recording and we were not able to do any photos or videos during the Q&A, the sound check, or the concert. They made that very clear. And at the time, I totally understood. I mean, that's a pretty common thing for really big time artists and big concerts. I know they do that at the symphony and then um, a lot of artists are, are very cautious about that sort of thing. You know, I get it. When we first walked into the Palladium just with the group of students at the sound check, Pat Metheny was just sitting there by himself playing solo guitar and you know he plays a bunch of different guitars throughout the concert so he's doing sound check um, just to hear what he sounds like um, in the hall. He's just sitting there playing by himself playing through some tunes and trying some things out and if people are recording that and then posting it online I, I understand that the artists may feel that they're not putting their best foot forward or they're not presenting something to the public that they really want out there. You know, maybe they're trying to do something special for this particular concert um, and they don't want everything online. I know personally as a musician, I hate it when the element of surprise is lost for a particular concert, especially if I'm trying to play some new music. Um, if somebody is talking about it or describing it beforehand or somebody even sees a video or hears a bootleg audio clip beforehand, then it does take away a little bit from the magic and the feeling of suspense about like, okay, what's gonna happen in this song? However, the more I think about this, the more I feel like a lot of artists are losing out on a big demographic that could actually be part of their audience. In particular with Pat Metheny, it seemed like the average age of the audience was at least 45, maybe more in the 50s. Um, and all of the people that I saw in their 20s and mostly 30s as well were students, either in high school or college, or music teachers. So Pat Metheny is an incredibly accomplished musician. I think he's won something like 20 Grammy Awards and he has collaborated and just been on so many albums and released so much music as a leader and just done so much in his career. So this makes me wonder a couple of things. One, why is he only playing one night in a city like Indianapolis, which has a decent sized population and I would hope could easily fill a concert hall for at least a couple of nights for somebody like Pat Metheny, who has been famous for many decades. And two, why were there even empty seats in the concert last night? You know, I would think like every guitar player would, would be into it. Um, even if you're not into his style of music necessarily, he's just done so much um, across a, a broad spectrum of styles. You really can't put him in a box at all. So this got me thinking, okay, who are the guitar players that young people maybe in their teens or 20s are really listening to? And one person that comes to mind is Shawn Mendes. So I guess you could say Shawn sort of inhabits the pop genre, although I don't really like thinking about genres, um, but I can get into that another time. Um, so if I'm taking, taking my average 16 year old guitar player, I would bet that he knows who Shawn Mendes is. And Sean is very young, I think he's about 20 or so. However, I would bet that that young guitarist does not know who Pat Metheny is, unless he has older people sort of guiding him into these different areas. Um, I would bet that he doesn't. Pat Metheny's career has been going forever and he's done so much um, and just created so much music. I find it a little disappointing that the young person wouldn't know who Pat Metheny is. So, this takes me back to the idea of 
recording a concert. Um, of course, the first thing that comes to mind why I think an artist wouldn't want people to record is it takes it out of context. So if Pat is playing a song that's seven minutes long and you get a little 20 second clip of it and you're watching it on your phone and the audio isn't great and maybe the, the picture is a little fuzzy too, you don't feel that magical feeling of being in a concert hall um, with the lights and hearing the full band live and the sound is sort of like surrounds you and engulfs you. Um, or even hearing the album version, which is mastered and mixed really well, so the audio quality is gonna be really high and the production is gonna just be like really great. Versus the iPhone, you're hearing the audio is, is never great. Even with using the earbuds, the audio isn't great. So I understand the artists don't want that spread out because it might um, give the wrong impression or a, a different impression than they're going for during the live show. I think what they lose by not allowing that stuff to be out in the public is that younger crowd because the younger crowd is going online trying to find people. That's why they all know who Shawn Mendes is, but a lot of them will not know who somebody like Pat Metheny is. Um, and a lot of that too could come down to the budget side of things. So in the pop world, they just have so much money to promote these artists that they're able to just like constantly push them out through different websites. In Pat Metheny's world, the budgets are much smaller, so maybe they're not able to promote as much, especially to the younger crowd, which could be discovering somebody like Pat Metheny for the first time right now, and they could have just missed out on this great concert. So that's just something I was thinking about um, with the whole recording thing. I know there's a lot to weigh in on on both sides, um, but I just hope that some of the older artists can sort of wrap their head around where the younger crowd is coming from and um, can hopefully come up with more ways to connect with them and to sort of um, help them and, and show them the music that they love as well, just so that um, the music and the knowledge keeps spreading through generations. Okay, so that's just my two cents on that matter. Um, I was just thinking about it last night and then a little bit today, so I just wanted to share some thoughts. All right, let's continue the vlog. store. They steered me towards this uh, Jack Black double duty <laughs> face moisturizer. So I was like, okay, fine. It's like a little, pretty little bottle. It's about the size of my hand or Maybe something. it's a good size bottle. It's a good size. Uh, 8.5 fluid ounces. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, there's no price tag on here. So I go up, you know, I'm thinking, okay, maybe it's like 20 bucks, 25 bucks. 5136. It doesn't expire until March of 2021. I'll see you again, Ulta, in three years. Okay, now I'm at a shoe store where my soul can come back to life a little bit. store where my soul is very happy. I'm <laughs> sorry. 